have a website also. Right. Right. I have a website. It's planningfortomorrow.net. And on that website, we have information. We have live feeds of information about estate planning. Um, we have information about um, uh, burials, about grief, a lot of information about grief. Um, there's just a lot of information for people to go. We wanted to create a community resource where there's one place where someone could go and gather information. And we continue to add information to that weekly. And uh, so that's a great resource for people to go and learn more about grief, learn more about uh, questions that they have that they may not go and ask a funeral professional, may not talk to their minister about, mm -hmm. may not talk to a grief counselor about, but they, you know, a lot of people want to do a lot of things in the privacy of their home. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They have right. to go and ask questions. And the internet is such a fabulous tool for those kind of things and they can get the information they need without even leaving the house. Though I would like to tell you that leaving your house sometimes can be a yeah. good thing. It's yes, a healthy thing. It's yeah. a healthy, healthy thing. thing. That's right. So with that information, I hope you are you're also are telling people <laughs> to get back in the flow of different things. And right. Sometimes breaking free, just going to the store or, or going with somebody someplace different uh, Absolutely. can be a, a, a good thing. Well, what about the people who cry a lot at death and, and other people feel like that people shouldn't cry because their loved ones are in a better place. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, that's that's interesting, Jamie, that you bring that up. Uh, there is, I've heard that over the years a lot, where families will say, and, and, Chuck, you said it a minute ago. You said, um, people don't know what to say. Yeah. What do we say? Oh, what yeah. do we say when people experience the death? I mean, you know, sometimes yeah. we say the, the wrong thing and don't mean to. Um, but we'll say things like, you know, don't cry. You know, they're in a better place. And they may be. They probably are. But we still have to cry. It's still a healing yeah. process. Jesus wept. Uh, when he lost his dear friend Lazarus, he wept. That's true. says he groaned. Mm -hmm. And you know, something I learned from that was Jesus, it, it, this is my thinking here, but Jesus knew in his mind that he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. He knew he was going to do that. Mm -hmm. But he still allowed himself to experience the grief, still allowed himself to weep. Mm -hmm. as we weep and as we grieve today. So he knows exactly what we're going through today. He knows exactly what we're going through. Wow. I found, and I've lost a few people in my life, but I found that those waves that I talked about, and it probably isn't one of those stages of grief so much as it's just a wave that happens within me, and I might be caught in one of those stages, but when I cry, it releases something, and I feel better for a little while. Like a, that intense grief that causes me to cry, when I release that, then I feel better for a while. If, if I didn't cry, I don't even know that I could contain it, but if I continue to cry, I think I would die. Right. <laughs> you know, so right. it, it's just long enough to where I can think, okay, I can be okay for a few hours now. Well, without that crying, without mm -hmm. that release, that may very well take us back to those stages of grief that we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. It may put us back into maybe a, a state of depression. Uh -huh. We've got to have an out. We've got, and that's, you know, the Lord has said it that way. I mean, He's let us cry. We cry tears of joy. We try, cry tears yeah. of sorrow. I don't think the, uh, er, you know, people 2,000 or 3,000 years ago really understood the grieving process totally, mm -hmm. but they certainly understood the the value in grieving. They actually paid people, according to history, to grieve, along to with grieve people. with them right. and to help them in the grieving process. They were hired. They were professional people who would grieve, right. uh, you know, and lament with you. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, that people didn't understand the value of that. And I'll never forget, um, I know we're jumping all over the place, but I was driving through Texas one time and I, I just lost my mother and I was just driving driving along by myself, and all of a sudden I'm so overwhelmed with the finality. I, get, I guess that's the thing that kicked in, the finality of my mom being gone, and she was only 46, so it isn't like I lost her at, you know, at an age that a lot of people lose their mothers, but she, I lost her at 46, not, not me being 46, she was 46. Right. And uh, so I was in my early 20s, and I was driving along, and I'm telling you, it's just overwhelmed with that finality. Mm -hmm. And I cried probably for maybe two hours and right. could not control myself as I was driving. And right. uh, no one was with me, and I was actually driving from Texas back this direction. And for two hours straight, all I could do was cry. I couldn't even get a, a, a single thought in my mind that would make sense to me of how this all comes together and what am I supposed to do with my life <laughs> right. after this? And where am I supposed to go, and what does life even mean right. You know, and with this? And, you know, after crying, crying that for two hours straight, something just came over me. I can't explain it to you because like I was really peace. crying out to God. I had a real peace. And I'm not sure if it was spiritual and physical both maybe, but it was really an amazing moment. And I do know that there is something to that crying and grieving right. that does release something. And sure, I've cried many times since then. Sure. And, but that really was a release that had I not done that, I'm not sure I could have went even, really even on emotionally. Right, right. 
So I guess there, there really is something to the grieving process. But I love what the Bible says. The Bible says this to all of us. When you grieve, it's First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter 4. When you grieve, don't grieve as others that have no hope. So I believe that the Bible is letting us know that there is a grieving process. Even Jesus exemplified it, like you said earlier. But it's, it's not without hope. It's with hope. And that hope is that we'll see him again. And we got to know that. And that's what our faith has got to, got to be. Any other parting things you have for the next 20 seconds that you could just say to somebody? Well, you know what? I'll say this. Let me grab this real quick. Okay. Read this right out of the Bible. Ecclesiastes right. says there is a time to weep, time to laugh, time to mourn, and says there's a time to dance. So that tells me that we're going to go through a process where we're going to laugh, we're going to cry, we're going to mourn, but then we're going to dance. And typically we don't dance when unless... Sad. That's right. Mm -hmm. So wow. uh, I think the Bible spells it out for us that we're going to make it. Yes, we are. We're going to make it. And it is a process, right? It is a process. God bless you all. We pray this has been a great help to you. Thank you, Fred Kitchen. God bless you. May the Lord be with you. See you next time.